Today we're commemorating the passing of Umbu Sawat and other people who passed away recently. The best way to commemorate people like this is to do the good that they told us to do. That goodness stays alive as long as we keep on doing it. So that's our best way of remembering them. In other words, remembering their teachings, everything that was good, everything that was helpful. Look at yourself to see if you're actually keeping those teachings alive. That's the best commemoration. And Lumpu Sawat had lots and lots of teachings that he left behind. One that was very striking is there's a the Thai phrase for being selfish means being concerned about yourself. And he said, and many times you hear people saying, "Well, the Buddha taught you not to be concerned about yourself." And he said, "That's not the case." He says you have to be concerned about yourself in a wise way. In other words, be concerned about your actions, be concerned about your words, be concerned about your thoughts to make sure they're skillful. Because that way you develop a happiness that really is to your own benefit. And it's for the benefit of others. Most people, when they, they're concerned about themselves, all they can think about is how much money they're going to make and how much status they're going to gain. That kind of concern is not really skillful because it creates boundaries between you and other people. In other words, if you gain something, somebody else has to lose. Or if they gain, you lose. The kind of happiness that comes from those things, the, the advantages that come from those things, those are not really reliable because they're going to change. They're going to have to turn on you at some point. Of course, if you really are concerned about your own true happiness, you've got to be very careful about what you say to make sure it doesn't harm anybody. Be careful about what you do and make sure it doesn't harm anybody. What you think, make sure it's not for the sake of any harm. That way, when you look after yourself, you're looking after yourself wisely. Because another one of his teachings is that each of us has only one person, i.e. ourselves, that we, have to, that we can be responsible for. We have other responsibilities, that's for sure, but the, who's really responsible for your actions? If you're not responsible for your actions, nobody is. You go around, around running, trying to be responsible for other people's actions, what they do and what they say and what they think, and yet you neglect your own actions. You're neglecting your true responsibility. Because you've got this body, and the body's going to be moving around. You want to make sure it moves around in a good way. You've got the power of speech. You want to make sure your speech is useful. It actually is a blessing to your mouth. And you have the power of thought. You want to make sure your thoughts are a blessing to your mind. When you take care of your thoughts, words, and deeds in this way, then okay, you are looking after what you really are responsible for. And you set a good example for others. Because as the Buddha said, the best way to help others is to set a good example and to encourage them to follow the example. If you forget about your own behavior and go running around trying to straighten everybody else out, okay, you're not setting a good example and nobody's going to be really in inspired by what you tell them to do and say and think. It has to start from your example. So turn around and look at yourself. Be concerned about your thoughts. Be concerned about your words. Be concerned about your actions. And this way we keep the goodness of Lumbu and all the other people who've taught the Dharma in the past, all the way back to the Buddha. We keep that goodness alive. Because the Buddha's teachings don't ever deteriorate, but we may deteriorate from the Buddha's teachings. In other words, we may fall away from the standards that he set. And that would be a sad thing. He went to all that effort to find a way to the end of, end of suffering, to find the way to true happiness. And it would be a shame if, we, if it came all the way down to our generation and then stopped. We want to make sure it gets passed on. The same with the teachings of Lumpu. He, he's responsible for getting this monastery here. Without him, that we wouldn't have the monastery. But the monastery has meaning in, this, in the sense that we're continuing to practice his teachings. This building has meaning because people are continuing to meditate and make merit here. The whole monastery has a meaning because people are meditating and practicing. So make sure that his gift has meaning, and that all depends on us.